Brianna. In this video, I just wanted to sit down and share my birth story because I know a lot of you have seen quite an intense labor and delivery vlog. Take a break. Ah! I think there was obviously so much happening and because of the level of just pain and intensity and chaos of that labor, I wasn't able to like say to the camera what exactly was happening, neither could Adam. It just becomes such a whirlwind. So I wanted to do an actual birth story video with Mr. Hayden here so you get to meet my baby too. This is Mr. Hayden. Hayden Charles is his name. Charles after my dad who we lost on Father's Day in 2019. Oh, <laughs> we're still sleepy, huh? I know, and I put this bonnet on you and I couldn't tie it because you were still asleep, so I fell off in the middle of this, but I can't go. I can get you situated. But yes, so Hayden's entrance into the world on November 20th, 2020. He was born at 8.29 p.m. and he was eight pounds, nine ounces, by far my biggest baby. My other two were both seven pounds, five ounces. So biggest baby by far. He was also 19 and three quarter inches long. And the other two, Landon was 18 and three quarters and Presley was 18 and a half. So by far my biggest baby all around. And clearly I ate a lot during COVID quarantine or something. I don't know. But going back to the very beginning. So my 39 week OB appointment was on Tuesday. He was born on a Friday. And at that appointment, my OB and I just discussed, you know, should I go through with an induction because we could have the induction scheduled for that Friday, November 20th. And the Thanksgiving holiday was coming up and we kind of just talked about like, you know, was I ready for an induction? I was one centimeter dilated and just slightly effaced. Um, and she really thought that yes, this being my third baby and the fact that I was having lots of Braxton Hicks contractions and I went overdue with my little girl Prezi. I was 41 weeks and six days when I had her and she was just like, I, you know, I think it would be best to avoid being overdue and going, you know, into the Thanksgiving week and with COVID cases surging, there was just a multitude of reasons why induction seemed like the best option, but I was still a little hesitant about being induced. I was with my little girl as well, which is why I waited until 41 weeks and six days, the very last day that I could be induced because I just wanted to try to go naturally. And so that's what I did all of the days after the OB appointment on Tuesday. I was trying everything to just kind of throw myself into labor. And it did work because then that entire night before the induction, we were supposed to be at the hospital at 8 a.m. I was up with contractions. I barely slept. Adam and I said maybe total we got three or four hours of sleep, but we really didn't sleep much because it just felt like, okay, maybe stuff is happening. But it was never under five minutes apart. So like that was kind of like our thing of like, oh, we need to go to the hospital right now. But my grandma and grandpa had already planned on getting to our house at 7 a.m. to be with our kids so that we could go to the hospital. So it was kind of nice because we didn't have like a last minute scramble to get people there for our other two kids. So it made it a bit of a calmer morning and I still got ready, still did my hair and makeup. Our hospital bags had been packed, well mine at least, had been packed for a while. Adams didn't pack him until like the very last week, which is just our personalities. My husband and I are like polar opposites on some things when it comes to organization and preparedness. I'm like the type A and he's like the very laid back, like gets to it at the last minute <laughs> type of person. But it was nice. My grandparents got there in the morning. So we went to the hospital and we had to check in in the ER and it was a very calm morning. There was only one other couple who had like just finished checking in ahead of us for their induction. So it kind of helped keep me a little calm because I was just a bit nervous with COVID stuff going on. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's just, you don't want to take any risk, especially when you're bringing a brand new baby home. Like the last thing you want is for your new baby, right? to get sick or for you to be sick when you have to take care of a brand new baby. So 
that made me feel a little bit better that there was nobody else there and so by the time we got up to our room I think it was like almost nine because there was like some stuff she had to do at like the computer down there to input us because I don't think I because maybe I didn't like ever make it like officially official that I was going to be induced they still had some stuff that they needed to do but they just said like my doctor was going to be there for inductions that day so we got checked into the room and by the time like we got acquainted with the nurse and they had to do my COVID test where like they did the like full like they shoved the swab up both sides of my nose which if you haven't taken one it basically feels like when you go underwater in a pool and all that chlorine goes up your nose that's what it felt like afterwards and my COVID test was negative and they did blood work and I think they like set me up with the contraction monitor and she's like oh yeah you're definitely having contractions and not my OB, but the on-call OB came in and checked me. And I was dilated, but my cervix was still not fully effaced. So they decided instead of giving me Pitocin, which was what I had with my daughter's induction, that they were going to first give me Cervidil before they started any of the Pitocin or any other like induction stuff. So by the time they came in to give me the Cervidil, it was noon. So we actually ordered like lunch there in the hospital and ate lunch. I'd also packed like a peanut butter and banana sandwich. I ate that early though. I like ate that for breakfast basically right after we got there. And just because we were kind of sitting around not doing much, Adam was like, oh, I have push presents for you. So he surprised me with some really nice push presents. So he got earrings that are the baby's birthstone and he got me a ring. He's like all of our kids is a push present. We've gotten another band that I can give to them on their wedding day, either for themselves or for their partner. And then he also got a bottle of champagne. So I actually, it's funny, he's almost two weeks old. Hayden will be two weeks old tomorrow, but I have yet to have a glass of apothic or a glass of champagne. I haven't had any alcohol since I had him, but my birthday is next week. So I was saying maybe my birthday I will, but <laughs> I've just been so focused on like, making sure my milk supply is good and feeding this little guy that it, it just hasn't happened, but probably for my birthday. <laughs> but anyways, so we were just kind of sitting around and by 3 p.m. I could tell my contractions definitely started to pick up and I was like bouncing on the ball and I was like trying to dance around the room. And if you were following on Instagram the day, you probably saw like the morning we were just like silly and super happy. We were so excited. We just, we were dying to meet this little well, we didn't know if it was a boy or girl. We were dying to meet baby and it being our little guy. But three o'clock, they checked me and they were like, yes, you're progressing. I forget how many centimeters that they said that I was at that point. We just kind of were like, all right, you know, I don't need Pitocin because she was saying like your contractions are like picking up. They're getting more and more regular. Like, I don't think we need the Pitocin. So I just kind of kept on being silly. And then I think it was around four, I remember definitely feeling like, ooh, like this is not tummy contractions. This is like my back and down my butt and down my legs. And it was like really, really intense. Like I remember the contractions with my other two babies, like they're a wave where you can like feel them picking up and there's like a spike of pain. And then they like slowly go back down. And this, like the spikes of pain were really, really bad. And I remember even like Adam and I kind of said like, I, I might need to call for an epidural like pretty soon here because this isn't feeling very good. But the nurse ended up coming in, kind of distracting from getting the epidural earlier and was like, I'm a little bit concerned because when you're having your contractions, the baby's heart rate is slowing down a little bit at the end of your contractions. And she's like, normally that's a sign that like either there's something wrong with the placenta or... She's like, a lot of times we see that in older placentas, like if you go overdue. So she had me lay down on my side, my left side, to see if then the baby's heart rate kind of balanced out or stopped dipping after I had my contractions. And she's like, I want you to like lay on your side for at least like 30 minutes to an hour. And that's when the labor pains really intensified because I think being on my feet and like bouncing on the ball and like Adam was rubbing my back at certain points. Like that was at least like helping get through some of the labor pain. And then once I was on my side, it was just like, holy cow. But 
I didn't like call for the epidural because I was more focused on just like watching the baby's heart rate and being like, is it, you know, going back up or is it staying like balanced after my contractions rather than seeing it dipping? Like I was just a little worried at that point. And the heart rate did look a little bit better, but around five, I was like, okay, I want to call for the epidural. So the nurse called for the epidural and honestly, it took so long. It was like over an hour by the time the anesthesiologist had gotten there, then the nurse wasn't in the room. So he left because somebody else was calling for one. By the time he got back, it was between like six to six thirty when he started the epidural like process of putting the needle in my back. But at that point, my contractions had gotten so fast. They, they were every two minutes, a contraction would start and my contraction was over a minute in length. So I had barely a minute to like regain my breath. Cause that's kind of how the contractions work. It's like that wave of pain that's super intense in the peak, but then you have like a little bit of downtime to sort of like regain your breath where you don't have pain. But because it was happening so quickly, I was like barely ready for when the next contraction was hitting. So they gave me an injection in my arm to slow down my contractions so that he was able to put the needle and stuff in for that draw. So as soon as the needle was actually inserted, he like was asking me, he's like, okay, like, can you wiggle your toes? And I was like, yeah, I can still wiggle my toes. And he was like feeling my legs. And he's like, can you feel this? And I was like, yes, I can feel that on both sides. And he's like, okay, well, whenever you, you know, you're ready, here's the button, push it. And like that will administer more pain medication for your epidural. At the same time, my OB comes strolling in. He's like, all right, let's check you. Let's see if you're ready to have the baby. And so he got right down there right away, checked me and is like, you're 10 centimeters ready for me to break your water and we can start pushing. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so it just like all happened so quickly. He broke my waters. Um, before that, by the way, I did have like the bloody show and I was feeling gushes of that, that I thought maybe my water had broken. But when he, the doctor checked, he's like, your water hasn't broken yet. So like, I'm going to actually puncture it. Um, so broke my water and I was on my back and we started pushing and I could just tell instantly from how my other two babies had been born. I was like, this isn't working. Like this doesn't feel the same. And that's when both like the nurses and the doctor were like, this is a bigger baby. This is going to take a lot longer. And I said, can I like change positions? Cause this is not working. Like this position just doesn't feel right. And they're like, well, can you move? And I was like, I've never pushed the epidural button. And they were like, okay, if you can move, like what fe would feel best for you. And I was like, I want to like get up on my knees. Like I, I just, I wanted to be up. So I kind of like got, not like I was on my like hands and knees, but like up on my knees, almost like just like squatting on the bed. <laughs> they were like holding me. And I had tried pushing like that for a little bit and didn't work. So then, I mean, we tried like every position. We tried like a different setup in the stirrups where I was more like leaning forward we tried on both of my sides where I basically had to like hold my lips open like the splits. They brought in a birth bar and put like a towel in it. So I was like pulling the towel and like pulling myself up forward every contraction to push. At one point I was on my hands on hands and knees like backwards on the bed and they had like a ball underneath me. I feel like I tried pushing in every laboring position probably possible. <laughs> Pretty much maybe missed a couple but what they had come to realize one because of my back labor and then just you know they could tell baby was sunny side up so that means his face was facing the wrong direction and so they kept encouraging me like keep changing positions because that's how the baby can then naturally turn the correct way to come down because at that like when i first started pushing they said he was like a negative one negative two in your cervix like a zero is when the baby's like head is like locked in the right place so he was still like up a little too far face turned the wrong way so it's probably a good thing that the ob did arrive when he did so that i didn't push the epidural button and get any of the epidural because i was then able to still be mobile and move around into all of these positions that i mean if you haven't seen the birth video yet you can go watch it and see literally I was like in every position and it was over two hours. And I just think in my head, had I had the epidural and he wasn't able to turn the proper way, 
I honestly don't think I could have pushed him out and probably would have ended up needing a C-section. So again, it's like probably like a huge blessing that the doctor did arrive when he arrived so that I didn't push the epidural of the anesthesiologist, like didn't administer any of it himself. So finally, it had gotten to the point where I'd been pushing for about two hours. I think it was like right around two hours. And the it was she was a doctor in residence was actually there with like a bunch of other nurses in my OB and the doctor in residence who was like right on my shoulder she had said to me like I had two nine pound babies like this is going to be a big baby like and she was encouraging she's like you can do it she's like this is a big baby but like you're going to have to push really hard and I looked at her and I was just like I need a pep talk like I'm gonna cry because honestly I feel like she's like an angel all of them in the room were like literally angels but I was like I just need a pep talk because I'm like ready to give up and she's like this is a big beautiful baby and you're gonna be able to hold this baby but it's not gonna come out like your other two she's like it's gonna take three contractions of you pushing with all of your might to get this baby out and she's like you can do it she's like I pushed out two nine pound babies but it took three contractions and really hard pushing and so i feel like i like just needed that to feel like okay it's going to be three more contractions and it's going to be like all my might and i just remember like trying to channel that and like <laughs> i like had heard somebody else say like think of your body of just like opening up like a flower and so i was like trying to visualize that and then just channel like every force of energy in my body to like come out of my vagina <laughs> and that was when I mean the ring of fire started then like I definitely like had gotten his head through the birth canal at that point and everyone in the room I mean if you watch the birth video I feel like you hear them all like cheering but because he was obviously so big it wasn't just like one contraction that could get him out so I had to wait a second for like the next contraction and there was still that like fiery feeling on like one last push but then he like slid out and it was nirvana it was heavy and it just like instantly the pain went away like instantly it was just like oh my god okay like I can breathe the pain is gone this is euphoric it was the best feeling in the whole wide world but also different from my other two babies he was not crying right away and I feel like this is where the birth vlog you can't really tell in it but when he came out I like reached to try to grab him and my doctor the OB was like no no no, you can't grab him yet like he's still attached and what I didn't come to learn and Adam didn't see it either because he was like handing off the camera and coming to me he had the cord around his neck and there was also a knot in the cord Push again? Yeah. Go right Take ahead. deep breath. Push, push. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Here, baby, come. Good. 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 Good job. Oh my god. He's gonna be coming in just a second. We'll just check this out. You're okay. Yeah. Good job, mama. Beautiful. Oh my god. Hi. Oh my god. Hi. Oh my god. Hi. So that was probably why his heart rate was dipping after all those contractions earlier. So it's honestly just like a sheer miracle that he's here and okay after how long the labor was that he was okay. Like, I mean, cause essentially what happens if like that cords around their neck or there's a knot in it, it means that he wasn't getting enough oxygen every contraction that I was having. And I was having a lot of contractions because of how close they were over and over and over again and so fast. And so that's also like the same thing for him. Like when I didn't have even a minute to like catch my breath, that's what he was feeling inside of me all that time too. So I'm just like, <laughs> 
I'm just so glad he's okay and like just going back to then when he was like finally outside like I was feeling amazing but I could tell he looked bluer compared to my other babies like my other babies looked more like red ish when they came out he looked blue and they like just kind of had him on my stomach and like started like shaking him a little bit with like a towel and then finally like I heard his cries and I was just like okay thank god like <laughs> I was like feeling so much better but I was also I just like knew that there was something wrong and then once I heard him crying I'm like okay it should be okay and then finally they like moved him up to my chest but this is just where everything like really in this moment is a blur I could tell that there was people arguing in the room and when I was screaming Adam said to me like when I was screaming from the ring of fire like the top of my lungs um a bunch of people who were in the hallway, I guess, like working nurses and a doctor came running into the room too. And I guess one of them was a pediatrician. And when they saw the baby come out, I guess they started fighting with my OB saying that they wanted to take the baby away. And he was, I guess, arguing with them like, no, the baby is fine. Leave it with the mom, which honestly, like, I'm happy he did that. Cause I think I would have been terrified had they like taken him away. And obviously he was okay and my OB knew he was okay, but I think the pediatrician just with what he clearly saw probably with the cord and his color was being precautious. But long story short, once he was finally on my chest, I was just like, <laughs> I don't think my vagina will ever be the same ever again. Like it just felt, oh my God, so swollen. The ring of fire was the most intense thing in my life like if I can really explain it it was like my eyes almost went white and like I felt like I was dizzy about to pass out but the hottest searing pain down there I mean it is it's, it's just like heat filled burning pain and the only thing I could do at that point was scream at the top of my lungs like that was the only thing I could do it just it's wild <laughs> what our bodies do and go through but again, like once it was over, I felt amazing. And that's even like what they said to me. They were like, wow, like you, you didn't have an epidural. Like you were moving around that whole time. Like you felt everything. And <laughs> then after a little bit of having him on my chest, my OB said to me, I have to apologize to you for what I have to do. He said, because I know, you know, you don't have an epidural but he said, you're hemorrhaging and I need to ensure that no blood clots are left in your uterus and I'm going to have to like wipe your uterus out right now. So while he's on my chest, no epidural, no pain medicine, my doctor had to reach up in there and I could feel him like, cause he with one hand was like pushing down on my uterus and his other hand was inside of my uterus, like wiping it. And I mean, that was basically like second ring of fire pain level. <laughs> it was, it was, it was rough. And so once he was finally done with that, I felt like, okay, I just am like focused on this little guy. So in love with him. I tried, you know, getting him to latch right away. We were doing like skin to skin and he did. He like took right to it. And then after probably I mean it was almost an hour I kind of like hogged him then Adam finally got to hold him and then at that point they took him to do like all his other measurements and things like that and he did turn out to be by far my biggest baby and yeah so I think that's everything I hope I'm not forgetting anything in my birth but I am just so thankful to my OB for like taking care of the cord situation immediately. And I'm so thankful to all of the nurses in the room who were honestly just angels. Like they were cheering me on the entire two hours of crazy pushing. And it was just really special too, since we did not know the gender for this baby, for all of the nurses there and for me and Adam. And Adam was the one who announced it's a boy as soon as he came out and it was it was just so special it was so special and i just i feel like i know that my dad was just holding him up there <laughs> i know poppy was holding you 
and <laughs> yeah so I do I feel like he's just this angel sent from heaven to us and I'm just so thankful he's healthy and okay and that's just what I feel like the next 24 hours in the hospital like once we learned about the cord and they said all of that I was just like <laughs> you're my little miracle baby of 2020 after it's just been such a hard year but yeah we could not be more blessed to add Hayden Charles to the crew brother and sister if you want to see them meeting him it's like the sweetest thing in the whole wide world and they are just still to this day so obsessed with him all they want to do is hold him and kiss him and touch him every chance that they possibly can and I feel like that's all I want to do is hold this baby because I just think it's a miracle that he's here like I saw on Instagram just a couple of days after he was born um it's tragic but a girl lost her baby because the cord was wrapped around his neck and from the time she went to her OB to the hospital she lost the baby and I just you know you hear things like that and it just makes you be like I'm so grateful I'm so blessed that he is healthy and doing so good but so we're almost two weeks out and I feel like as far as like postpartum recovering goes breastfeeding is going really well he is eating like a champ that's another person the lactation consultant who came in the day after we had him just gave me a couple of tips about nursing about just kind of really ensuring that like I'm holding my breast in one hand his head in the other every time that I'm latching him so that like my like you have to make sure your entire like nipple and the like surrounding part of your nipple goes fully inside of their mouth and that has made this like so much less painful and I think other starts of nursing with my other two, especially Landon, I just remember it being so painful. And not that it's like a cakewalk, but I feel like that has helped just like from the start lessen my pain of nursing him. And he poops like a champion. <laughs> so I know he's getting fed. And this time around, I'm just trying not to like be obsessed with wanting to bounce back. I remember feeling that way, especially with Landon, like your first baby. I think you're just like, I want my body back. And this time I'm like, no, it's just gonna take time. And I would rather focus on eating really healthy and having the best milk supply and feeding this guy <laughs> as well as I can and can worry about all of that. You know, I mean, it's six weeks before you can even do any kind of exercise anyways, so. I'm just trying to give myself lots of grace and make the focus be about am I eating healthy and feeling good so that I can be as happy as I possibly can be for this baby because I do have a history in my family of postpartum depression and I think I definitely probably had it undiagnosed with both of my babies um, in particularly around like going back to work because I've realized how triggering that really was for me and even thinking about like leaving him like that that's just what it like does to me so I'm very grateful for the fact that with him I am working from home and don't ever have to leave him and can make my own schedule and can base it around what he needs and what I need and I just I thank God for this community because it's because of all of you you know like thank you like I could just cry like no I'm giving you like a hug through the screen right now because like you're here watching this and like making such a difference in my life so just thank you like YouTube you're amazing thank this YouTube family and I'm still a little bit swollen still bleeding padsicles are amazing the freedom mom you need the like spray bottle I shared this in like the vlog that we did with him um the spray bottles amazing you need that postpartum. I didn't have that with my other two. I just had like the hospital one and it did not work like the Freedom Mom one does. So that one's great. And yeah, I feel like I just am enjoying the newborn bubble and I'm so grateful for this community and for all of the support. And if there's anything more I can share or do to help you, please let me know in the comments if you have questions or if you have requests of things you want to see in videos. I am just kind of taking my time with getting back to making videos and like don't have a regular schedule right now so make sure your notifications are on but I do still want to be able to help you and give back to you the way you've given back to me and Hayden and our family for 
this entire journey and now the start of his life. We're so glad you're here. My camera actually just cut me off. It said I hit the maximum recording time. So I'm gonna go keep cuddling with this little guy and just know you mean the world to me. And yeah, I will see you in our next videos. Bye loves. Do one more close up of this little guy. You're my baby. Huh? Oh, oh, you spit it out so they can see your cute face. Say Always hi. will be. Thanks YouTube. We love you guys. I hope you you're the know. best. Love you. Bye. My love stays <laughs> when you go.